Percy, that's my soulmate. Great. Thanks, BuzzFeed. I love it. I would say it's a fair assessment that people are opinionated about BuzzFeed. Oh, that's hot. So I was looking for books, as I do, and I found that BuzzFeed has a book news section, and I am curious to see what they will have for me. Let's get started. I have scooped the dog. Come on now. Paper Towns, overrated, no idea, haven't seen it. Quidditch doesn't make sense. Sounds like someone never read Quidditch through the ages, huh? It's a non-stop action game. Why are you allowed to call a timeout? Aren't all games non-stop action games that you're allowed to call timeouts in? Am I missing something? I don't get it. Catching Fire was way better. Um, I can kind of see it. The Hunger Games is, um, it's the beginning of a series, and I definitely feel like the author's writing got stronger towards the end. Um, uh, the Boys movie is better than the book. Oh, I haven't seen the movie yet. But that book was pretty good. You'd have to really surprise me with the movie to make this one better. Harry should have ended with Hermione. Okay, so this one is controversial. And I remember reading and being like so mad with JK about this one. Because she was talking about how like she just kind of wanted Ron and Hermione to end up together. And that it bothered me for a long time. and almost kind of ruined the- Okay, nothing would ruin the series, but like of all the things that the series have done, it's probably like one of the worst, I would say. I think with a little bit of tweaking, Harry and Hermione would make a really great couple. Um, I only saw the first movie, but judging from the quality of the books for The Maze Runner, it has to be true. I mean, like when you're rock bottom, the only direction to go is up. So I could see that. You want your collar off, extra scratchy. Good job, good boy. I was not part of the hype. I wasn't aware of the hype. I just read this one because of Rainbow Rowell and I liked that author in general. So as just someone who liked this author, the book was satisfactory. I thought it was pretty good. One thing I really like is that we have Eleanor and she's a bit of a bigger girl, not like huge, but she's in a waif. And Park is half Asian and the two of them come together in a very difficult time in both of their lives. And I think they're like in the 80s or so. But like I really enjoyed this slice of life book and I liked the profanity and I liked how real the characters felt. They weren't like cookie cutter YA tropes. It was well written so I don't know how much hype this person hmm, Anna was experiencing but I thought this one was really good. I thought it was really well written. The trope when the main character loves reading is annoying. All right, let's see what the actual comment says. It's so annoying to me. It's such an obvious way to have the reader relate to the protagonist. I am sorry that liking to read apparently is the same as peeing in your Cheerios. To me, I like it when the characters like to read. It makes me, I guess it does work because I do feel connected to the characters, but at the same time, it's kind of like, what's the alternative? Oh. I don't know, I love, I love, love, love Court of Thorns and Roses. Throne of Glass is still very good. I've actually started reading Sarah J Maas's latest one. The first hundred pages was a little rough. And like once you hit like page 80 or so, and this is like a, I think that's like 700 page book, things start to change significantly and it starts to pick up a lot. It was a little, it was a little bit rough in the beginning. Also, who's ready for Nessian? Cassian and Nessa, this book, it's coming out, it's coming out soon. Okay, it's not coming out until like January 26th. But like, practically soon. <laughs> yeah. 13 Reasons Why is a horrible book, really, when you think about it. Obviously, there's some good that can come from any book, I feel. Like, the good that comes from 13 Reasons Why is talking about how awful it is. Very problematic book. Would not recommend. That one was interesting. I kind of like that one. AP Hunger Games. I got three... What does that even mean? What is a three? Quarantine, mystery books you won't be able to put down. Okay. This one, definitely put downable. I don't know, there's just, there's so much build and then not enough payoff for this one. I just, I could not get into it. This one was all right. This one focuses on two sisters. One is normal-ish. The other one just keeps accidentally killing her boyfriend. <laughs> 
and then the normal sister has to help out her serial killer sister hide the bodies. This one was quite good, but like good BuzzFeed, why are your book titles so freaking big? I shouldn't have to scroll down, I haven't read, haven't read The Good Daughter, I think I read this one, or like I started to read it. I must have put it down because I don't remember the ending. Haven't read, haven't read, haven't read, haven't read. Ooh, this one, this one's good. So, seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle for this one. It's unputdownable. This one was crazy good. However, like, it's definitely one of those books to try and read it in as close to like one sitting as possible because there's so much happening that if you put it down your you might end up like forgetting something crucial to the plot. I read it pretty much within 24 hours. And even then, like I wanna go back and reread it and see what all I missed because there's just so much up in the air and happening. Very well written though. Put downable. So like for all the missing girls, oh wait, they're linking these to Goodreads pages? Oh, interesting. I wonder if any of my stuff gets linked. Megan Miranda, of course. Interesting that they li link it to Goodreads pages. All right, so this book is told backwards, where like the first chapter is like 14 days after, then we have 13 days after, 12, and you get closer and closer to the event that was at the start of the book. And they find out there's a reason why most books are told in a chronological order. Because the things that, ha and I don't want to give this away, because this is one of those books if you give it away, everything is ruined. <laughs> it's essentially like the things that happened on day one slash day zero, whatever they call it, would definitely be in the thoughts of the main characters for all of the days after that. And that annoyed me because obviously the audience is not told of this because like, you know, you're just trying to figure out the mystery. But when it's something that like is so prevalent and drives so much of the action, there's absolutely no reason why the main character wouldn't have occasionally have thought about it. So I, I just couldn't click with this one. Plus, the title talks about all the missing girls. Like I was under the impression like there's like a freaking serial killer in this book. There's just two of them. It's plural, but barely plural. I guess you can get kind of like, philosophical like some of the females in this book are missing themselves like who they are and who they were but I yeah it just didn't work for me what else we got we can't tell the movie is apart one photo from Harry Potter and the sorcerers this is definitely chamber this is the scene where Ron is outside of Harry's house this one Slytherin is 90 this one, I, I feel like this is definitely movie two. Movie two, this is connecting with this, movie two. How am I supposed to tell, if, is this movie one train? Is this movie two train? Movie three train was the one the train got the extension, so we can definitely tell that one apart. This is movie two, judging from Hermione's friends, so we can definitely tell that that one's movie two. This is a random assortment of packages. Might be two. This might be the should not have said it. I think this one's two. Ooh. This, I, th I think this is it. I think this is it. I think this is the key scene. Obviously Ginny. I don't think the rat really showed up other than um, the first train scene. I don't remember. This is definitely two. This is definitely two. This is definitely two. This is definitely two. Oh, <gasps> I did it. I figured it out, okay. They're freak. they are identical. Come on, BuzzFeed. Seriously? I'm supposed to be able to tell that this one is- this one is from Goblet of Fire and this one's from the Order of the Phoenix because in the Order of the Phoenix, Voldemort learned how to raise his hand. This is just gave me mad. I'm a Harry Potter nuke. Immersive audiobooks. Okay. Now, I feel like I- there's a lot of these I'm just getting like- knows for because like I haven't read them but like in the last three years I've read over a thousand books like way over a thousand books so it's not like I'm not doing my part okay these are 27 immersive audiobooks 
Haven't read it. On the list. No. 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 I have a copy of this one. I want to read it. Oh, I read this one. And I didn't like it. It just felt boring to me. Okay, so like the premise of this book is that there's Evelyn Hugo. She's been married seven times and she's like super, super famous in this world. Her life has just been gossip, tabloids, over and over and over and over. And then we have this young girl. She is a reporter and Evelyn Hugo just says she's gonna give her the scoop of a lifetime. And then from there we go through Evelyn Hugo's life and then talking about all of the little details in it. Like, so-and-so, I married so-and-so, and this is what was happening in my life. And it's supposed to be like this super scandalous, super like exciting thing. Ugh. I don't know, like, I think it's just because at the beginning they're like, oh, this is Evelyn Hugo. She's amazing. And I, I never really connected with it. I just didn't really care who the, her husbands were and what her life was like. It was just like, eh. From what I remember from this audiobook, it was, it was well read, but wasn't anything to write home about. It wasn't anything that was like blowing my mind and um, did not read, did not read, did not read, did not read, did not read. Ooh, yes. So this one was gorgeous, beautiful book, like absolutely wonderful. And it was one of the very few books that has made me cry. Nope, 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 nope. Ooh. Currently reading this one. I'm about a half hour into the audiobook. So far, so good. Have not read most of those. Classic. Okay, here's the thing. Okay, so like this is the 20 most iconic book covers of all times. I'd be impressed if you can identify just five. So if these are really the most iconic books ever, why are you setting up your audience for them to only identify five? So this is 25 true crime books that scared people but also fascinated them. I wouldn't say I'll Be Gone in the Dark is scary, but it is really interesting. This is written by Michelle McNamara, and she actually died before the book was published and the killer was actually found. Essentially, there's the Golden State Killer who has raped and killed so many people over time, and um, she was obsessed with finding him, and she went down so many leads and found so much evidence that it was just, it was incredible how much she did. I don't read too much like true crime books in general, but I thought this one was like really, really well written. So it was very good. Okay, I read this one as well, The Devil in the White City. Okay, so here's the thing though. H.H. Holmes, the serial killer during the Chicago World's Fair, he's that one who made that hotel with all of like the secret passages and whatnot. Fascinating tale. The landscaping of the Chicago World's Fair, not interesting. It was like, it got to the point where like, I was, I loved, loved, loved everything that had H.H. Holmes in it, that was excellent. But the more the book went on, and I was actually looking at the pages, the less we actually talked about the serial killer, and the more we talked about the Chicago World's Fair, which was okay, and it was interesting in its own right, but when you when you pair it with something as big as H.H. Holmes, it just gets so overshadowed that it's just not worth it. So for me, I wouldn't waste your time with this one. Hmm. Ooh, that's interesting. Hey, Rebecca, nice. What did I find in here? Nope. Oh, yeah. But good on you, Rebecca. I'm glad you liked that one. I should read it. If Rebecca's reading that one. So then I got to thinking. Did BuzzFeed ever quote me? Because obviously I've never had a conversation with BuzzFeed. But it seems like they're pulling quotes from a lot of different Goodreads reviews. So let's let's quote this now. Miranda reads, because if they were to pull me, they'd use my full name, and they also have to have Buzzfeed. All right, let's see. Oh, let's see what they say. 25 Things That Belong On Your Birthday Wish List by Yi Yang. Well, Miss Yi Yang, you definitely didn't talk to me about quoting me in your article. That would have been nice. Let's see what we got. Pikachu AirPods. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Ooh. A little birthday can. That's kind of cute. Mm -hmm. This is all stuff I'm not familiar with. So I'm wondering where they quoted me. Oh. I remember this book. Is this my. Yep. Alright, let's see what they say. An extremely charming book about owls filled with interesting facts, watercolor illustrations. It'll be an absolute hoot to flip through. In all honesty, yes. This book was amazing. I love the images. I love the... Well, actually, you could just read my review right here. Absolutely adorable. Loved it from cover to cover. This was such a good book. It had great humor. I do agree with that. I still agree with that. It was a quirky little book. And... Uh, yeah, okay, so we have this. This looks a little bit short to be my Goodreads review, so I wonder if they're going to link it to my Amazon account. Yep. Yep, they linked it to my Amazon account. I don't know how I feel about this. Because on the one hand, when you're writing reviews for Amazon, there's an expectation that you don't make money from that. You're just writing them because you want to. And they get very particular for people who do try to make money, so I'm always very careful about that. But here, BuzzFeed just took what I wrote, threw it in their article, and presumably they're making money off of it because of the advertisement. I don't know how popular this one was. Seven comments, so probably wasn't very popular back in September. But at the same time, like this is like a situation where it's like you could have asked. I probably would have said, well, maybe I wouldn't have said okay unless they gave me some compensation for my writing. I don't know. I wonder if all of these people, their reviews are just ripped from Amazon too. Huh. So regarding BuzzFeed books as a way to kind of get your up and up on the latest book trends and the movie to book adaptions and lots and lots of Harry Potter quizzes, I would say doesn't rank very high with me. And I, if I, in all honesty, it's a little bit repetitive in terms of news. Like, And then also with my personal experience with finding my quote on BuzzFeed without giving them any consent to use it kind of makes me wonder of all the other articles I read how many of those were the people contacted before they were part of an article so because of that I think I'll probably keep shopping around for my favorite bookish news source if any of you out there have any suggestions with where to find books or where your trusted book news sites are I'd love to hear them thank you so much for watching and happy reading Wishing you lots of great books, relaxation, and puppy snuggles. Bye!